Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today's a bit of a special episode because it's specifically targeted not just at beginners of Studio One necessarily, but also at beginners of music production and recording in general. Today we want to talk about the term track. What is a track, how do you use it, and why is it such a fundamental cornerstone of any kind of music recording? In music production, a track is usually the recording of one instrument in your song. We actually speak of tracking often when we mean recording an instrument onto a track. These tracks are then combined together in the mixer console to create a song. For example, if you have a band of three, one being the lead vocalist, one being the bass and one being the guitar player, then you would have probably three separate tracks, one for each of them, so that you can then uh, record their performances separately and also edit them separately afterwards if you want to. In a modern digital audio workstation such as Studio One, tracks are far more flexible and can be used for different things rather than just recorded audio material. You can also use tracks to send out MIDI note data to virtual instruments and samplers, for instance, where the sound is then being generated in real time. Or you can also use tracks for automation data to make something louder or quieter over time or make something move from the left to the right speaker. And there's even folder tracks which you can use to keep your session tidy. I'd say let's take a brief look at each of these tracks together to get a feel for their differences. All right, so let's take a look at the various tracks available in Studio One. You can create all of these different tracks by right clicking here in the track list and then clicking on add tracks. But there's also a far more intuitive behavior, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, where you can just drag and drop elements from the browser, but more on that later. So first of all, the audio track, this is what you would need to create when you want to audition and or record a microphone or instrument source from the real world. So if you have an actual uh, electronic guitar or an actual microphone that you want to talk or sing into, that would be recorded on an audio track. Or when you have a recorded sample at hand that you would like to use in your composition and it's a WAV file or like an MP3, that would also need to be hosted on such an audio track. Now. When you want to record actual audio into your computer from the real world, then we need to specify where that audio is coming from before we can start recording. This is why the record arm button, which would enable this track for recording, is currently grayed out because I haven't specified where I even want to record from. This is what we do with this drop down menu here where it says record input. If you don't see that, then make sure that your track height is a little bit expanded. You can adjust that by simply dragging here on this track handle and it should show up right away. And here you can specify the kind of input that you're using. You can actually do that directly here in the audio IO setup if you don't see anything here, which you probably won't if you do this for the first time. And then you can also specify on what input this is coming from. So in my case, I have my microphone that I'm also talking into right now, and that's plugged in to the first input on my audio interface. If you want to learn more about audio interfaces, I have a dedicated video on how to set that up that I'm going to link you right here. But let's stick with this for now. I have the microphone set up on my first input. So this is also what I assigned in the audio IO setup. And now I can assign that here on this audio track. As soon as I do that, you can see now this record arm and this monitor arm button become active. And the difference between the two being that this one enables the record readiness of this track. So if I would now hit record down here, you see that I am already recording on this audio track. Whereas all the other ones where this is not enabled, they're not recording. If I would uh, enable record here on this instrument track, it would start recording as well, as you can see. And the monitor button next to that actually lets me audition or listen to what I'm currently recording directly in Studio One. If I would engage that now, you would probably hear my voice twice because you would hear it here from my video recording software and then also from Studio One. So it would sound doubled like this. Um, in this case, it's probably not making too much sense, but uh, this would be what record and monitor arm are being used for. We can also use the solo button here to hear just what we're currently recording or the mute button to hear everything but what we're currently recording. 
Now we want to take a look at the instrument track, which is far more flexible in many ways than the traditional audio track. You would need to create an instrument track if you'd like to work with virtual plugins and instruments such as synthesizers, samplers, orchestra libraries and so forth. Um, these kinds of sound sources are usually triggered with MIDI notes that you can draw into the instrument track or you can also record note data using a MIDI controller such as the Presonus Atom SQ that I have here in front of me. A fundamental difference between recording on an audio track and recording on an instrument track is that the latter is, as I said, extremely flexible because it's non-destructive. Meaning, after you've recorded your MIDI note data, you can very simply just edit the pitches, you can change the note lengths in case you got that wrong at some point, uh, and it's super easy. Whereas with audio, you would need to actually manipulate that recording that you've made in that very moment, which is a more destructive process. However, nonetheless, it's of course still very much possible. Another difference is that while we had to assign the input here for the audio track to determine where that audio source that we want to record is coming from, on the instrument track we need to do kind of the opposite. We need to specify where we want to send the note data to. This is what we can do with this drop down menu right here. I could either select one of my outboard synthesizers that I have standing behind me or I could simply assign an instrument here from the browser. And you would simply drag and drop them directly on the instrument track to create the assignment. So in that moment, Studio One would know any note data, any notes that you record or draw into this track here are to be sent to this synthesizer. Now, this assignment, as you just saw, can be easily done with drag and drop. In fact, I don't even have to create an instrument track first. To begin with, I can simply drag the instrument that I want to use into my song and you can see the instrument track has been directly created with the output assignment here, so I don't have to do that at all uh, manually. With the drop-down menu below, we can also specify what kind of controller we want to use to send note data to this virtual instrument. So if I select all inputs, then I could use any MIDI keyboard or any MIDI controller in my studio that I've set up with Studio One to trigger notes on the synthesizer. But I can also specify certain ones. So if I, for example, select the Atom here, then you can see that I'm not able to play the Mai Tai from my Atom SQ anymore, just from the Atom that I have standing right here. So this is also great from a live performance standpoint. Uh, select just a specific controller that's triggering just a specific instrument, which gives you even more flexibility, of course. Just like with the audio track, we also have a monitor arm and a record arm button here on the instrument track. The record arm button would enable us to record note data in real time onto this track, whereas the blue monitor button would allow us to audition the instrument as we're playing it. Arguably, it's even more important on an instrument track that monitor and record arm are on at the same time because otherwise you can't even hear what you're playing because it's a virtual instrument, not one that you can actually also hear in the real world. So that's why in Studio One you can toggle this behavior that record arm and monitor arm are being put on and off at the same time, which I find very, very useful. All right, so now we covered the two most important kinds of tracks in Studio One, the ones that generate actual sound and make up your song. Now there's two different kinds of tracks that I still want to talk about, the automation track and the folder track. The automation track is being used whenever you want to change something about your sound over time in the arrangement. So if you want to make something brighter gradually or even abruptly, or if you want to change the volume of a sound also over time, all of that would be done with an automation track. So that's incredibly intuitive in Studio One because you can add automation tracks for recently touched parameters very quickly. So for example, let's say that on this synthesizer here, I want to add a bit more brightness to it. So in that case, I would probably turn up the cutoff. And let's say I want to do that over time in the arrangement then I could already just go to the top left here in Studio One. And now I could just grab the cutoff parameter, which I touched last, and drag that onto its own automation track. This is how you would create an automation track in Studio One. And now I could just gradually bring that up like so. Now, you can have, as you can see, and this is quite different from other um, digital audio workstations, you can have your automation on 
their own separate tracks if you want to. In most cases, I would probably keep that on the same track as the instrument. So then the automation track would be a layer of that instrument track, so to say. And if you want that behavior, you simply press on this A button here. And now this automation track has become sort of a sub layer of that instrument track to keep the amount of total tracks in your arrangement a bit smaller. The final track is Studio One is more of a workflow help than anything else. You can certainly do without if you want to. It's the folder track. Sometimes I find that quite handy. You can simply create that just like any other track by right clicking here in the track list and then clicking folder track. And here you can simply consolidate all of the tracks that you kind of want to group and edit together. And um, yeah, especially if you have multiple so-called events like recordings in your timeline, you can then, for example, split and duplicate them all at the same time, which can be useful in various applications that I'm also showing you later in my other tutorials. Hopefully this video was informative to you, even if you knew most of these concepts already. And if you didn't, then you now know what kind of tracks are available in Studio One and what they're being used for. Thank you for watching.